It's called the police officer shuffle. That's when officers accused of wrongdoing keep moving from one department to another. Tonight, the Nine on Your Side I team reveals why that happens and what the Ohio Attorney General believes can help address it. Chief investigative reporter Craig Cheatham continues his investigation of how local police departments police their own. The I team requested and received records from 40 local police departments. And based on those documents, we found that a dozen local police officers have found new jobs in law enforcement after being fired or resigning following allegations of misconduct. The soundtrack of Elmwood Place is harsh and unrelenting. He grabbed me and he slammed me into the uh, police cruiser. Rough me up, slam me on the ground. Residents say complaints about village police officers and how Elmwood Place responded to them are also part of the village's identity. Where can I file a complaint against the police department? Elmwood Place hired Jacob Goodwin on January 2014. It was his fourth law enforcement job in three years. As a new town cop, Goodwin repeatedly violated department policy and was disciplined for it. He was employed with us for a year. We were going to terminate him. He resigned. Goodwin moved on, getting hired by the Aberdeen PD and the UC Health Department of Public Safety. In May 2016, just two years after Elmwood Place hired Goodwin, the village fired him after finding he couldn't account for drugs he handled. He had also failed to show up for work on three days, was groggy at work, and failed a drug test. Police Chief Eric Bartlett told the I-Team there wasn't enough evidence to refer the case to a prosecutor. As things went bad, he had a ballistic vest on. In April, Goodwin was charged with robbing five businesses at gunpoint. When I got about up here, when I'm ready to turn in here, that's when I noticed the lights. James Williams was pulled over two years ago by Elmwood Place police officer Justin Habig. I stopped right here, then the officer, he gets out his car and he had his weapon already pointed. He said, I want to see your hands, blah, 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 your hands, I'll shoot. In a police report, Habig claimed Williams was speeding and ran a red light before finally stopping. Williams denies that. He snatched me out the vehicle. He roughed me up, slammed me on the ground, talking about I'm fighting you. I'm not fighting you, bro. I don't even know what's going on. Williams was convicted of resisting arrest, reckless driving, and possession of marijuana. Had anything like that happened to you before? Never. Never. Candace Roper was six and a half months pregnant when she struggled to get in a police car after getting arrested for domestic violence. She said Habig, wearing a Bengal sweatshirt and shorts, rushed to the vehicle. He said, I got this. Kicked me several times in my leg. Then he grabbed me and he slammed me into the uh, police cruiser right on my uh, left side of my stomach. The criminal charge against Roper was dismissed. She and Williams filed complaints against Habig, but there's no evidence the village investigated the complaints. My baby's in my stomach. Like, how could they not even be born yet and be victims of police brutality? I, I, I couldn't get that. I still don't. Like, even still to this day, I'm like, why? In letters to Habig in 2015, Mayor Gerald Robertson wrote, quote, you have had more complaints filed against you than the rest of the department put together. The mayor also said that included four citizen complaints about Habig in just one week. Still, Habig wasn't disciplined. What do you think of that? I'm disgusted. I'm disgusted. Elmwood Place is not alone. In 2014 and 2015, Colerain Township determined one of their sergeants, Joe Redmond, illegally accessed a confidential police database. He avoided criminal charges by agreeing to resign. New Miami hired Redmond without requesting his disciplinary history from Colerain Township, even though that history is a public record. New Miami fired Redmond eight months later. It's a problem. Uh, some researchers refer to this as the officer shuffle, where they move from one agency to another uh, after having gotten in trouble. Bowling Green State Professor Phil Stinson says many smaller police departments can't afford to pay for a recruit to attend a police academy. So they hire people who already have their peace officer certification. The result 
you do provide opportunities for people who have washed out from one agency to be hired in other places. In January of last year, Elmwood Place's new mayor, William Wilson, fired Habig after another village officer, Todd Armstrong, complained that Habig held his gun two inches from a suspect's head and threatened to shoot him. Habig is now a full-time officer in Cleves. The Cleves police chief described Habig as an exemplary employee. He leaves this department and he goes to a different department. They don't care about that, bro. They're going to hire him anyway. We showed James Williams a picture of Justin Habig in his new Cleves police department uniform. Another picture. That's bull****, man. I couldn't even stay there. I had to move. Candace Roper had accepted the noise in Elmwood Place. She says it was the silence and tolerance surrounding allegations of police misconduct that convinced her to leave. Justin Habig and former Elmwood Chief William Peskin did not respond to requests for comment. Former Coleraine Sergeant Joe Redmond says his law enforcement career is over and the new Miami chief who hired Redmond is deceased. Ohio Attorney General Mike DeWine tells the I-Team that the state should have a database that tracks findings of police misconduct and that officers who are allowed to resign instead of facing criminal charges should also be forced to give up their police certification.